Hello, welcome to another edition of Trial by Magis. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new and upcoming aircraft, the Yakovlev Yak-3T Soviet fighter. I say fighter here. Historically, uh, this aircraft was a modification of the venerable Yak-3 airframe and intended for use as a ground attack aircraft. Yes, this thing was meant to use a heavy cannon mounted in the nose and two light cannons above the engine in diving attacks against enemy armored vehicles, tanks, half-tracks, armored cars, all the kind of things that you saw scattered all over the Eastern Front. And the Yak-3T, historically, uh, was judged to be a failure uh, due to overheating problems with the engine, due to having these heavy cannons up here, they had to modify the engine in order to uh, allow those cannons to fire without overheating, and that caused uh, heat transfer problems for the engine itself. So the aircraft actually never made it out of the prototype phase historically, but here in World of Warplanes, the Yak-3T gets a second lease on life, reclassified as a light fighter, putting those heavy guns to use purely against air targets. Now, characteristics-wise, the Yak-3T is a very standard Soviet-style fighter. It's all about the turn fight, it's about getting up in close where those cannons can be accurate and do maximum damage in a short amount of time. This is the reason that I think that this aircraft is interesting compared to the other premium aircraft that are offered at this tier for the Soviet line, like the Yak-3RD, the LA-9RD, and the Kostikov 302. Each of those three other fighters has a gimmick about them. Uh, the 302 is a Tier 7 jet fighter, technically, even though it has ramjets instead of turbojets. The LA-9RD is an LA-9 that is backed up by a pair of ramjet engines underneath the wings. Very gimmicky. And the Yak-3RD is a very lightly armed Yak-3 with a single 20mm cannon in the nose, but it has a butt rocket for extra boost and increased speed. The Yak-3T, however, has none of those alternate propulsion gimmicks on about it. It is purely a fighter that carries a holy cannon armament. And it allows the aircraft to be uh, piloted the same way you would fly anything that comes after the, uh, the Lag-3. So let's take a look at pilot skills for her here. On this pilot, which uh, is one of my more experienced Soviet pilots, I've taken uh, the uh, Marksman 1 ability, Engine Guru. The aerodynamics expert has become an extremely important ability for dogfighting aircraft to have since the introduction of the uh, new equipment system. And so I have it on this pilot. because. This is a Soviet fighter pilot. I also have aerobatics expert on him. On top of that, to double up on the maneuverability increase. Now let's see why those abilities are important. Let's take a look at my equipment on him. Okay, see here, I've mounted on my fighter the uh, Kalimeter sight, which I have uh, almost fully upgraded. Very good benefits there, although downside is increased uh, chances of damage for the pilot on an aircraft where that's already a problem. And we have the lightweight airframe at advanced. Legendary setting for uh, ultimate reinforced skin. And finally, the lightweight engine in order to increase further the amount of uh, turning ability that this aircraft has, which 
for a Soviet fighter at Tier 7, that ability to turn quickly and avoid damage and get on someone else's tail and line up your shot, that is what the game is all about when you're in an aircraft like this. Uh, for optionals, I have the fire extinguisher because yak fighters tend to catch on fire a lot. Uh, I've also put in the, uh, the bleed inerting system to decrease the fire chances. Uh, I've got the Mario Kart upgrade here for emergency control system, bottle restart for my engine, and universal ammo, of course, because why not? Tactics-wise on this aircraft, uh, she works just as well by herself as she does in a group, although personal preference for me, I always enjoy having a wingman because you can't cover your own tail at all times, and especially if you have enemy team flyers that are ganging up on you, a wingman is always good for those situations because no matter how skilled you are, if you are the subject of a dog pile, you will get taken down eventually. Uh, for team flying, uh, the Yak-3T makes uh, an excellent uh, tip of the spear aircraft. Her heavy guns allow uh, knockouts on head-on passes against uh, equal or lower tiered fighters. Uh, I would not suggest going head-on with a heavy or an attack aircraft in this thing because I guarantee you their guns are going to be more powerful than yours, even though the guns on the Yak-3T are ridiculously powerful at medium to close range. you got to have a bit of uh, gun control on your trigger with this thing. Uh, those guns are not accurate outside of... Uh, 500 meters without some serious piling on of equipment bonuses and uh, pilot crew skills. Uh, so you want to hold that trigger until the enemy is nice and close and deliver that crippling punch or just a straight knockout in one pass. The guns do overheat if you hold the trigger down, so I recommend uh, taps and bursts for uh, air defense aircraft and enemy fighters. Uh, for a heavy aircraft, uh, you may have to make more than one pass and just settle for that. Overheat your guns on the first pass, go evasive for when the heavy turns around and makes another pass at you, and then finish him off after you dodge his second attack. Uh, attack aircraft, the Yak-3T is not very durable, so you want to avoid taking a lot of damage from rear-firing guns. So, uh, above, below, and side attacks against enemy ground attack aircraft are the most effective. It's so long as you can avoid uh, having an enemy aircraft uh, get on your tail while you're lining up the kill shots on an enemy ground attack aircraft, this plane is excellent in that role. Which makes sense. Uh, historically speaking, this thing was meant to uh, destroy tanks and ground attack aircraft really are nothing more than flying tanks in this game. So there's another role for this aircraft if you do not have any enemy fighters to engage. Uh, the fighters should be your uh, primary uh, target when you're in this aircraft. Don't worry about getting up to high altitudes to engage bombers or anything like that. This thing just is not capable of it without the uh, assistance and additional boost uh, given by the mixed propulsion systems found in the Yak-3RD, the LA-9RD, and the Kostikov-302. If flying high in Soviet aircraft is what you want to do, first you should rethink what nation's line of aircraft you're working on, and secondly, if you're looking for a premium aircraft that can fly higher than the dogfight, this is not the aircraft for you. It doesn't have the engine power to do it. It doesn't have the, uh, the speed or the staying power once it gets up there to actually hang with the aircraft that belong up there. It's a fish out of water. Don't do that to it. Keep it down in the dogfight. Engage the uh, enemy turn and burn fighters like Spitfires, Japanese aircraft, and Americans. And get that air superiority over targets before moving on to the next objective. I have a couple battles for you now in this. Uh, these are my first and second battles uh, that were set up in private channels uh, before this thing's release. 
and I hope you enjoy it. Good hunting. Combat zone. Get ready for battle. Good luck. Approaching the front line. Off we go.
Let's go north and hit that rocket base. You are approaching the front line. Off we go. Колбасер по пояс голый. P47 heading your way, engaging.
говорила, колбасеры это сила.